Imagine someone is yelling at you at the top of your at the top of their lungs. They're yelling at you and they're they're giving you all kinds of abuse or they're telling you, get out of my life. I don't want to see you. I can't believe how much you infuriate me. You're such an awful person. Can you sit with that? And can you be with them and say, I see you're in pain and I see all you really want right now is love. Hello, welcome to Soul Awakenings with Madia Sosan Podcast. Today we have Heke Ross. Now Heke is going to teach you how to play. Uh, he's an inner child life coach uh, whose mission is to guide adults to play their stress away. After suffering firsthand for over a decade, the chronic emotional and physical toll the unbalanced and stressed out with overachiever can cause, uh, he wants to provide an alternative to those who have been told life isn't supposed to be fun. By choosing to support his clients and those who he teaches about inner child, uh, he gives them practical advice on how to overcome the fear of being uniquely and authentically you. Now, I'm really looking forward to interviewing this guy. Guys, uh, when I had a free chat with him, he has so much amazing things to say and I'm sure uh, you will love this guy. So, let's bring him on. Hey, Heke, how are you doing? Hey, Medea, I am fantastic. How are oh, you? That's, um, I'm doing amazing. I've got my palm tree here and I'm on the beach. I'm so good. <laughs> Very jealous. Very jealous. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're in lockdown, so we need something, you know, uh, to keep our minds going. Um, so I was looking for uh, an inner child healing like expert and uh, someone on my Facebook comment commented, um, he tagged you in the post and, and uh, I looked at a couple of your videos and you you amazing the way you explain and the work that you do and I think it will help quite a lot of our listeners. Um, so, you know, to start off with, um, tell us a bit about yourself, a brief overview for our listeners who don't know who you are yeah so my name is uh my name is hake um and i am an inner child life coach and uh i'm grateful i'm appreciative that you've called me an expert on inner child but i've uh, uh yet yeah, for me i've i've more call myself a, a, a play expert mm -hmm. and uh which is something I, I i'll talk a lot more about um and this is something i've been doing for as long as I can remember, but I've only realized the power of it, the benefit of, of play and inner child healing only when, you know, it became so apparent to me, that's what I was doing. And it's, um, so as we all are, I'm an expert in my own life and being me. Hmm. And I, I do my best to try and empower others to, to be playful, to live their lives authentically, just, just, just as they are. Oh, that is beautiful. Um, I know, like, I've come across inner child healing on my personal de development journey. And, um, you know, uh, I know quite a lot of people aren't aware of it. Um, so I've done it with myself. So what is like uh, inner child healing? Like, if you can explain it to the listeners who have no idea. What yeah, beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, the, the funny thing is I love, I've gotten really good at explaining it to people who have no clue about it because that seems to be so many of the people I speak to. Um, and not that there's not that there's a lack of, um, you know, lack of intelligence in these people, but there's just a lack of awareness in what the heck this inner child is. And I was the same way not too long ago. So this, this idea is there is this inner child inside of us who is almost trapped in a place of when they were a child. So we've all had different uh, traumatic or different experiences that happened to us as children. Um, you know, sometimes we have uh, parents who love us too much. Sometimes we have parents who don't love us enough. Sometimes we have brothers and sisters who remind us that we're really stupid or whatever it is. And 
inner child healing is all about being able to go back to those experiences and let that child know that even though those things were said, even though those things were told to them, it's not true. It's not true. In the same way, if someone comes up to us and says, they say, you're stupid. Hmm. And they say, you're a car. Hmm. You know, you smile at, well, you're a car. Of course I'm not. Hmm. But can we internalize, I'm stupid? You know, we, that's something that I can say, oh, well, maybe I am stupid. And, but no one will ever try and convince us that we're a car. No one will ever try and convince us if they get like a gas nozzle and put it in their ear, like, I ain't going to mm. work. I mm. happening. And so, so it's really understanding that these things that were told to us, these things that were shown to us, these, these ideas that we were made to believe as a child aren't true. And that we are a beautiful being of love, of joy, of play, of light. Mm. And it's coming back to who we were originally when we were born that beautiful, innocent, naive, curious child and reclaiming them, bringing them back into our life now. Um, that's, that's very briefly what it is, but I'll, I'll explain more later on. Okay, that's, that was, makes so much sense. <laughs> that's a, and also like, you know, I find that, you know, people who've been through trauma, we kind of suppress our child, uh, mm. in a child, right? It's, it's uh, when we go through trauma, when we're at a young age, uh, we mm. suppress it. And uh, it's so important to uh, do the work that um, the inner child work. And I totally get that because over the past four years, that's all I've been doing. And it's, um, it's really, really um, amazing, powerful uh, work. Um, yeah, so how did you uh, come across inner child healing? Mm. It... I always find this funny. Part of me feels like an imposter when I, when I share this um, because it seems so true to me that I, I've been doing it for a lot longer than, than I have, but it was really two years ago um, that I found this book called uh, You Can Heal Your Life by Louise Hay. And Love some of book. you may, some of you may be like, oh, Louise Hay, oh, and other <laughs> you may be like, who's Louise Hay? I found there's like such a difference and she was a beautiful inspiration in my life. And I picked up this book. I was, um, uh, I was recommended uh, re recommended it by a past mentor of mine. And I got onto this chapter about inner child healing, uh, you know, you know, reclaiming your child. And I thought, what? What is an inner child? Maybe many of you, uh, how you're thinking right now, what is an inner child? And I so clearly remember them, the, uh, her saying, you can name your inner child. You know, give your inner child a name, listen to them, speak to them. And I thought, oh, that's, that's kind of funky, but I really resonated. It was like, boom, so quickly because I'm a playful person. I like to play. Like, you know, if, it, you know, if you're one of my friends, you'll, you'll find me like tripping you up, flicking your <laughs> ear, um, you know, teasing you a little bit. Like, have you, if you've ever seen a kid saying, why, but why, but why I'll do that. You know, people here in England, especially they say, sorry, all the time. And I say, how sorry are you? <laughs> and that messes with their thinking um and it so it really resonated with me and i so i named my my inner child um and my original my my birth name is jake and so my nickname was jakey um and she recommended to call your call your your inner child um little and then whatever nickname you had so i called him little jakey and this cool. Yeah, and this this progressed into now I call him his nickname's LJ. So LJ. just because uh, and once I gave him that name, he was like, ah, he loved it, <laughs> and, and so did I. Um, but getting back to that, I started. I just started going for it. You know, I just started to um, to be to be what is what I now know to be a parent to him. Mm. I started to. Uh, speak to him, you know, as best I can. And for anyone listening, still confused, I did it as best as I could. You know, like I would listen to him little bits. I would try and understand where he's coming from, and just take the time to to see who he was. And when it really came in was when I had broken up with my my ex, um, and I was someone who had my guard up, like 
you weren't getting in no way um i had uh I, you know the who are the guys with the furry hats that stand outside <laughs> buckingham palace like i had them all the way around no one was getting in and when i yeah when i'd broken up with her it was um you know i, I hear myself it sounds a little corny but like it was my it felt like you know my life was just crumbling before me and i realized how how much approval I was getting from her, you know, like how much I, and then getting really into it, I realized how much she was a mirror of my mom and how much the approval I wanted from my mom. Mm. Um, and all this was taken away from me the day we, you know, we broke up and, you know, it was, it was, you know, a few days after and I'm like, oh, my life is <laughs> over. And really what I was hearing was I was hearing LJ crying out for that approval that he just had taken away mm. and it was tears so many tears because some people call it shadow work some people call it original pain um you know it was all this stuff that was told to me or that was shown to me or made made me believe as a child that you know i'm not worthy and so i need to get love outside of me and all this was coming up. And so it became my responsibility as the parent to my inner child, to LJ, to say, okay, um, now it's my time to look after you. Now it's my time to hold you. Now it's my time to tell you, you are worthy. I love you. You are more than enough. And when, when I really began to see the power of it was the wholeness, you know, for anyone, anyone listening to this, I'm getting chills right now, just as I think about this is I felt empty. Like, you know, it was like a half, like, a, like there was just here. This was, this was me. Like this was a hole inside me. There was nothing hmm. there. There, it just felt so empty. It felt like a cave, a dark cave. And when it really began, be, be, began to show itself to me that this is, this is the, I don't call it work anymore. This is the play that I'm meant to be meant to be taking uh taking part in is i began to feel whole hmm. i began to feel like that that cave that was dark that was you know wet it was all kinds of it wasn't pleasant to be in was lit up hmm. all of a sudden i saw this this beautiful beacon of light this oh my goodness wow i can love myself hmm. and i felt whole i felt whole for the probably the first time in my life. And so that's when I felt like I gotta, I gotta share this. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's such a powerful uh, work, isn't it? One of the um, things that I, I normally do is like, uh, write, write a letter to my younger self. And it's, it's such a powerful way to connect with yourself. Where, and um, the way I do it is like, um, you know, uh, from my non-dominant hand, I write uh, to my adult self. And then from my dominant hand, I write to my younger self. So it, it really works when you write from your non-dominant hand, you actually do write like a child. So you you're, you kind of channel that childlike energy and it's like, okay, I would say, yeah, dear um, adult Medea, um, a teacher, I did not like the teacher in this school. So, you know, it's, it's such a, it comes out, it comes out naturally. And, and with the, with the, uh, with the dominant hand, I would just write, um, you know, a dear younger Medea, you, you know, you are doing brilliantly. You're going to go through this, 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 but it's going to make you stronger. So it's like you're kind of playing with motivating your younger self and the younger self is going to, is coming up to you um, as a role model, you know? <laughs> uh, so it's, it's such a beautiful, that's one way I, I, um, I do it because it's, it's, it's amazing. Um, so, you know, what, that. Yeah. Uh, what did like people around you think? Um, and how did, how did they see you change? I've, I've been, I've been seeing myself change so much. And there's this uh, lovely Wayne Dyer quote. I don't know if he, if, if, if he, if he created the quote, mm -hmm but he says enough that I think it's from him is when you change the way you see the world, the world changes. Yes. Right? 
some yeah, it's, at least that's when about you it. say I actually gave that um I said that at the end of one of my talks so when you see you no know, I'm now I'm getting it wrong <laughs> when you when you change the way you see the world yeah. the things you no you I, see, now I'm getting it <laughs> the things you see change yes 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 that's, that's it, it. That's oh my it. god, people must think like I'm a fraud like it's like you gave a talk on it and you can't even remember. <laughs> yes, yeah, you know, I got every quote that I've ever remembered up here and then it comes down to here and it's like yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, but I think people got the point. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. Um and so I started to look I started to look at these uh these people, these situations um as one learning experiences, you know, like I would get a trigger. You know, someone would come up to me um, or someone would tell me, hey, can you do this for me? Mm. And whereas I had a friend who, you know, I think, okay, I have to do something for them. You know, mm. if they ask me for help, I either have to do it or I have to feel like a bad friend that I haven't helped them. Mm. And what happened was is internally, I felt enough. Internally, I felt worthy of, of who I am. So I could say no, and this is where boundaries come in. And like, it makes like, for me, I'm still saying this, it makes no sense in a way. How do boundaries come in by loving yourself? But I become enough. And so I can then convey to someone, I appreciate you asking, but I don't, I don't, I can't do that. Hmm. And I bet, oh my goodness, you don't even have to justify it. Hmm. And people are like, oh my God, no, I have to say, I don't have the time, hmm. even if that's a lie. And so I was able to interact with people more authentically. I was able to say, no, it doesn't feel right for me right now. So I could, at first I had friends who I was connecting more deep on a deeper level. I was able to be present with them. I was able to share what I was feeling and they could really see that, you know, they began to see, wait a second, this, this person is able to feel sad. Mm. They're able to be who they are, all of it. And it's almost like I began to show people that it's okay to be how you are and i have this little this this phrase that i started using it's okay to not be okay mm -hmm. and 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 that became quite like a revelation for me and other people began to see that and my connections with my the the three people who i had the most contact with the child had blossomed my brother my mom and my dad like this, you know, it's, it's come from a selfish place in, a, mm. uh, in, in healing my child because I want to feel love. I want to feel worthy, but I love telling this to people, my, the impact that I've, I've been able to experience my mom, my dad, my brother, just, just them alone is like, wow, I get to love myself and share this love with them. And we get to bond and we get to re recreate these connections that for whatever reason, we weren't able to share fully. You know, we weren't able to be fully present with who we are. And um, with my family alone, it's been just amazing. It's been amazing. And friends as well. And some friends have left. Some friends have come in, um, you know, as, as they do. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was just about to ask you because, you know, when you change, um, quite a lot of your relationships change uh, as well. And, you know, people who already know you from the old you kind of don't vibrate on the same uh, level anymore. So it's like it becomes like a bit of a conflict um, mm. between the two. And um, yeah, if anyone is going through right now, it's like they're going through that change. Uh, what advice would you give them right now if they're going through that change and they're losing uh, their friends or family? Mm. Um, I'm going to say the one thing that I normally find either triggers people or gets people to stop listening and going in their mind, go inside, yeah. go inwards, mm -hmm. take some time to listen to your intuition, take some time to listen to even, you know, your inner child, you can ask them what's going on for you with this person. Um, you know, what are they bringing up inside you? Sometimes we have, uh, we have old, we have friends or people that we know that we don't even really like being around, but we feel an obligation to be around them. And they're just reminding us, they're triggering inside of us the understanding that I need to, I need to learn what you're teaching me. I need to learn to, self, to have self-respect mm -hmm. because you are constantly coming in my life to challenge me self-respecting myself. 
And so take some time, oh, man, meditation, I can't recommend enough. I lie on my bed as much as I can and just close my eyes and go inwards and let myself feel what I'm feeling. And if you can, if you can, I really encourage you, if it feels safe enough to have a conversation with this person. You know, sometimes, you know, we think about breaking up with our girlfriends, boyfriends, partners, whoever it is. Um, but I, I don't ever really hear it much about breaking up with friends. Mm. You know, sometimes that's a really nice conversation. Challenging, believe me, challenging. I've, I've, I don't, I can't remember a time where I've had it because things just naturally drifted away. But having conversations if you're breaking up with, with a partner mm. because you're worth it. You know, every single time come back to you are so worth having the people in your life who see the importance of who you are. Mm. You are so worthy of that. Come back to that. I am worthy of having people that surround me in my life who love me, who appreciate me, who see the beauty of who I am. If there's someone taking that away from you, goodness, look at that. You're worthy. Mm. Mm. Totally agree. Totally, totally agree. Mm. And, um, you know, I, anyone who's listening or going through this right now and just stay in hope that you're changing for a better, you're changing, um, you know, if everything is ending in your life right now, friendship or family, whatever it is, but keep going and you, you will attract the right people at the right time. You're just getting, you're just getting, you're just preparing for that, that next level relationship, friendship or whatever. Um, so yeah, beautiful, uh, beautifully said, okay. <laughs> I love saying your name, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, you know, you've, um, uh, you touched upon, you know, about the family, how they saw you change and, um, so, and how you came across the inner child healing. And so what did you do specifically, uh, mm. within yourself? There, there were a number of different things. Um, I'm going to be a little bit vague to begin with. And then what I did was I created a safe space inside myself. I became quiet enough to listen. And I began to make choices that moved towards love. Mm -hmm. to, to, now, to be more specific about that, Imagine someone is yelling at you at the top of your, at the top of their lungs, they're yelling at you and they're, they're giving you all kinds of abuse or they're telling you, get out of my life. I don't want to see you. I can't believe how much you infuriate me. You're such an awful person. Can you sit with that? And can you be with them and say, I see you're in pain and I see all you really want right now is love. And that everything, every part of my being is reminding you of how uncomfortable you have, how uncomfortable the need for love is for you right now. Mm. And that was what was coming up inside me. This, oh my goodness, I don't want to be seen. I don't want to be seen. Get away from me. Don't look at me. Don't look at me. Don't look at me. And so I spent time in my meditation, listening to these thoughts of, you're not worthy. You don't deserve to have people around you who love you. Mm. You don't even deserve to say, I love myself. I used to say, I love my, I used to say, I love myself at times. I'd look in the mirror like this way back and say, Hey, good to see you. Mm. But it, when I looked at myself in the mirror and I saw, I said, I love myself for who who I am. And I used to do this daily. I had this mirror, this really long mirror that could see my all, all of me, all my physical body. And I'd look at myself in the mirror and I'd say, I love you for who you are, speaking directly to my inner child. Hmm. And the pain that was there, the don't look, get away, the distractions that would come up, all the, no, don't do this, don't look at this, don't, let's get away. How, what YouTube video can we watch? how, what food can we eat? What, you know, let's, let's do anything else. Um, I'll go to the dentist. Let's get some, you know, why don't you go pick a fight with someone like anything, you know, <laughs> anything to distract me from this feeling. Mm. And so I spent time listening to 
what was coming up, you know, this, these, these declarations that I'm not enough. I also, as I said, I became a safe space, which means I stopped judging what I was feeling because it wasn't me who was feeling it. This might get a little confusing, but it was LJ, my inner child who was feeling these things because if my inner child is being triggered by something, it's him. And that's not me taking away responsibility from myself. I'm taking responsibility as the parent who was there to look after him, but it's not me. It's not me because all of a sudden I can have something trigger me. And I bet we've all had this. And you're like, why the heck am I feeling this way? Why is it? All right. Why is it? If someone says, Oh, you look nice today. Oh, Oh, thanks. Oh, thanks. Yeah. And then you start searching for their approval. Like you start saying things to, to, to search for those, com those compliments again, or what happens if someone says, Oh, you look a bit tired today. And you're like, Oh, well, um, I, you know, I just didn't get enough sleep and I, you know, I've been really stressed out and you begin to justify. Hmm. And that's a feeling of being triggered. And so I stopped, I stopped needing to, um, I stopped needing to say, okay, why I'm feeling like this is bad. Why I'm feeling sad. Why I'm feeling vulnerable. What, why I'm feeling is bad. It's just saying, this is okay. Hmm. And my goodness, that is challenging is to sit with that person who's like, I'm not enough. I'm not enough. And it makes you tired. Yeah. It makes you feel like you want to go to sleep, like hmm. anything to get you out of this. Hmm. And I spent so much time lying down. Look, I've got, I'll be right back. I got Carl. This is, this is a stuffed, this is a stuffed cauliflower, right? <laughs> this is Carl E. Flower, right? And okay. he, I, I'll, I'll cuddle him sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I am right now so confident, so accepting that I have just, brought onto a podcast my, a stuffed cauliflower and said, I cuddle this. <laughs> Beautiful. Because that's what I do for LJ. Because that's how he feels safe. That's how he feels cared for. And there's mm -hmm. so much more. There's, there's just a tremendous amount more. But that is like, that is the, the bare basis. I listened. Mm -hmm. I, I listened. And when he asked for something, I did my best to give it to him. Beautiful. Wow. <laughs> I love it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, that was that was amazing. I mean, like yeah. uh, you just randomly just brought. <laughs> no, I think I think you're right. You're absolutely right. It's it's amazing. So, um, what is like the point of inner child healing? Healing in your view? Yeah. Um. So just just to go back on that question you'd asked before, I'm gonna go more. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna find there'll be more to talk about that a bit later on. So um, for anyone who wants more detail on that, I uh, hope they'll be able to share that. And then mm -hmm. um, the point of inner child healing is to become whole. Mm -hmm. I like to, I like to say it. Um, I actually spoke to someone, you know, and I asked them to say, I, I just, just tell me that you love yourself for who you are. Mm -hmm. And they, they, they were like, all right, I love, <laughs> <laughs> I love, they, you know, it was like, I it couldn't do it. It was like, uh, they, they forgot how to speak. And it, that is the point of inner child healing is be able to say, I love, oh, I love myself. I love myself for who I am. Mm. And to really mean it, to feel it, have it be something that is felt in every part of me. Like my heart is singing right now. I love myself for who I am. Mm. The point of inner child healing is to become whole is to fill up this emptiness that we have created um, from believing mm. people who told us we weren't enough. Mm. The inner child is irrational. And when I say irrational is they will believe what's when someone says you're stupid or mm. um, don't do that or why would you do that? That's such a silly thing to do. The adult mind is rational. So as I, as, as you said, if, if someone, if I come over to you and I say, you're crazy, you might laugh that off. But if a child hears that they may internalize that. Mm. And so it's really letting go of all those beliefs that have, um, that have come together that 
have made have made us made one made you made everyone feel as if they aren't enough for who they are Mm. and if you have if you're confused about this go in the mirror and just Mm. say i love myself for who i am and see what comes up yeah and i totally agree especially with uh i'm not enough and i think there's this quite a lot of majority of people who are at that stage where they don't feel worthy, they don't feel enough. So, so, um, you know, I think inner child work really would help you with that, you know, um, because you're you're basically getting in touch with yourself, you know, like you said, your inner self, your inner child. Um, And uh, we can also the cute cauliflower, I absolutely love it. (laughs) I can't get past that right now. Yeah. So, um, so what, are, what have the others and your clients, uh, been taking, uh, from, uh, like, you know, inner child healing? Yeah. So what I, what I love, what I absolutely love about what I've been seeing from my clients, cause I was a bit, you know, I was like, if you've ever said to someone, yeah, this is great. You should do this. You should go out and try this diet. You should go out and try this meditation. And people are like, yeah, shut up. Yeah. And they're just like, it's good for you, but it's not good for me. And so I was skeptical. I was like, okay, I'm taking my experiences and I'm going to transplant them in some way into the hearts and minds of other people. And I was like, all right, first off, am I, is this okay to do? Like, is this actually going to work or whatever? Um, and the cool thing is it has, and not only has it really like, it has been really powerful for, for my clients and the people who I've spoken, spoken to, even in like short conversations, 10, 20 minutes, I'm just talking about, it and you can see the, dun, 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 the cogs tick in different ways. Mm. It works so quickly. Mm. It works so quickly. And the reason I say this with, with confidence is because I've, I've seen people and we're having a, a, a conversation and I go deep. Like when I do, when I do, when I'm coaching, I, I go deep. Like I'm, I'm, you know, my intention is all in. And so we're on a two hour call. Like that's, mm. that's what we're doing. And we're sitting and we're having a conversation and they're telling me about their experience as a child. And all of a sudden something clicks. It's like, boom. Oh, my, my mom wasn't, wasn't there for me. Or my dad, you know, taught me that. I was, I was, I was silly for, you know, trying to share my emotions or my teacher or my brother or this or that. And then it's the ability to share, share in a safe space. Hmm. And all of a sudden there's this, there's this like different view on life. And I want to, to explain it. It's like unity. Hmm. It's feeling that you're inside your body. It's feeling like, wow, I actually feel more like me than I have before in my life. And the reason that happens is all these feelings, all these thoughts, all these, these beliefs that our inner child had that said, I'm not, I can't share this. This isn't safe. This is, this is dangerous. If I share this, people will really, people will see me for who I am. That's no good. That gets to be shared, all these inner secrets. And they're not inner secrets, you know, like, oh, I've, I've, I've killed someone or I've had awful thoughts or like not, not secrets like that. Um, secrets that we don't share because if, if we're found out, we'll be seen as an awful person. And so if I say, I didn't really feel loved, you know, or, you know, when I tried to get affection, I was pushed away. All of a sudden that's shared. And it's safe to share. And my clients and people I speak to, they'll feel like, wow, that's okay. I can say that. And then all of a sudden, all of you, all of you is loved. Not just part of you, not just the parts you want people to see or the parts you want to share. All of you is loved. Hmm. And that creates this unity and this feeling of, oh my goodness, I'm powerful. Hmm. This is who I am. Yeah, that is really beautiful. Um, you know, it's um, 
I'm, I'm sure many of our listeners who um, be so um, so amazed by what you have to say right now, because I am, it's like, oh my God, this guy's so awesome. Are <laughs> yeah, they you? So, yeah, you are. You are just, it's just amazing, like everything that you're saying and, um, you know, and, you know, I'm sure many of our listeners would be really interested in uh, diving deep into this work. Um, uh, so how can someone uh, begin to bring this in their life? Yeah. Uh, so there, there are a number of, of different ways and I have, uh, 12 guiding principles on, on how to re reclaim your inner child on how to, to parent them, how to, um, open up to them, them speaking to you. Um, and but the last one I'd like to share, which is the most important, because sometimes you know, you're know you hearing all these and your mind's getting involved, you're hearing child's like, I don't want to hear this, is three, three phrases. So one, two, three. Mm-hmm. We'll go there. I see you. Mm. I feel you. And I hear you. Mm. These are so powerful. And I even did them in my meditation this morning. Before I came on here, um, I had, and I want to really make it simple. Uh, I, I, so I'm just going to mention those because there's a whole number of other ways. And if anyone is interested, you know, they can, they can contact me or I can, uh, they can find other things online. But I really want to make it simple for people because sometimes we get overload. So I'm just going to go with those three. I see you, I feel you, I hear you. Mm-hmm. And so I did that this morning. I had a meditation and it was it was amazing the impact it had and so would that be all right to share yeah yeah cool so in my meditation i actually had quite a um quite a powerful experience the day before a whole lot of like ego awareness a whole lot of vulnerability was coming up uh, yeah a lot because I, I went to a workshop that um one of my teachers uh, is is uh, that did for me, and I was just like blown away. Mm. Um, and at the same time, you know, all these identification with things came up, and so I was feeling very, um, or LJ rather, was feeling very vulnerable in the morning. And so I took some time to meditate with him, and I began to have this visualization of uh, my friend's dog Rain, and Rain is quite um, quite a, a scared dog. So she grew up in uh, a part in Portugal where, you know, she wasn't treated very well. And so she, she was really scared. And I, I had this, vi- this visual because we're getting a little bit closer at me and her and she's starting to trust me more, which is great. And, you know, she'll come over to me and actually let me like, um, you know, give her some love and pet her on the head and that. Mm. And I had this visualization of her escaping because I'm looking after her and the other dog today and her, her escaping, getting out. And then it was my job to, to try and rescue her. Mm. And, you know, seeing how scared she was of the world, and this was all in my meditation and visualization, seeing how scared she was of the world. Um, and then me being, able, me being there to show her it's safe for her to come back in my arms, I'd carry her away in this blanket, um, you know, and she felt safe enough, still scared, but safe enough to be with me. Mm. And I thought, this is curious. Why is this coming up? Mm. And immediately I felt, oh, LJ's feeling something. And I translated this to that, to Rain, my, the, the dog was LJ. Mm. And how he was feeling was, he was feeling scared in this world. He felt like he didn't have uh, someone looking after him, um, you know, in that moment, you know, like it, it triggered him back into how he was feeling as a little kid. Mm. And it was my role to pick him up, show him the world is safe, put a blanket around him and be there for him. And so how that, how that relates to, I see you, I feel you, I hear you is the first thing I had to do is I had to feel him. I had to feel the discomfort that he was in of being himself in that moment. Mm. I had to then see him. I had to see him as a beautiful being that needed help, that needed some support. And then I had to hear him. I had to hear what he was sharing. I had to hear the you know, the, the pain, the, the fear that was coming up for him of, 
oh my goodness, other people, this is how other people see me. I'm not worthy. I'm not lovable. You know, and I've done a lot of, you know, I would say I've done a lot of inner child healing. I spent a lot of time doing this. I spent every day, every day in either a big way or a small way, healing my inner child. And this, these things still come up after years. And so I heard him and I realized he, he's vulnerable. He needs protection. And I gave that to him mm-hmm. because what I saw Rain need was a blanket. So I laid down on my bed. I put the blanket over me, over him, got Carl, tucked him under my shoulder. Mm-hmm. And I was there with him. Mm-hmm. And within about a minute, I felt back to feeling whole. You know, this vulnerability had dropped. And I felt, oh, wow, unity. Uh, mm-hmm. I feel accepting. I feel loved for who I am. And, you know, that is that was just taking that time Mm. to be there for him, to listen to him. And you know what? It's, they are so innocent in the way they ask for help. All he wanted was a blanket over him Mm. and attention. That's all he wanted. And I gave that to him. And, and then he feels like, wow, I'm loved. And then he goes back to just chilling out. Like, yeah, you know, probably like you are on your beach. (laughs) Just like, Hey, life is great. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes it takes a lot more time. Some t- sometimes it takes a lot more attention. But that's just a simple example of I mm. see you, I feel you, I hear you. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, and I think a lot of us need to practice that in our everyday life, right? You know, we get into conflict so easily with other people. Mm. Um, so, you know, it's a, it's a great way to, when something arises, it's a great way to pause and, and um, I see you, I hear you, I feel you. Yeah. You know, say that to yourself and then I think it will just it will pop up and you will start mm-hmm. to feel the love and the compassion for other people. You know, oftentimes when we when we're driving and someone overtakes you or someone goes past the red light yeah, and you, you you don't think, right? <laughs> But you don't know, they may be, they may yeah. have like, uh, I don't know, they may have some emergency or you just mm. need to have like that love and compassion and vulnerability to understand them. Mm. Um, another human being, not just animals, but hum- human beings, trees, you know, it's, it, mm. we're all connected, it's unity, unity consciousness, we're all mm. connected, this whole universe is one, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, so... If you like, actually, we can, I can show you quickly how this would, this would fit for you so other people can kind of see it. Okay. Like it? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I'd like you to think of a time that was really important to you, you know, whether it was something that was painful, that was mm-hmm. sad, something that was really joyous, something like where you, oh my goodness, I couldn't believe this happened. Something that really had a lot of emotion attached to it. Um, I think. The most important time was when I lost my dad when I was 13. Okay. Yeah. So if, if you're okay to, mm-hmm. I invite you to just share just a little bit of how that felt for you, whatever you feel, just in like a few mm-hmm. sentences, how that really felt for you, whatever you feel comfortable in sharing. Um, I felt my world crumbled. I felt uh, frightened to be alive on this planet. Mm-hmm. Um, I felt like I had a wall taken away from me. So I felt unsafe. Yeah. Mm. So I want to now share what I heard with you. What I heard from you is what I heard you say is you felt your world was crumbling, Mm -hmm. that it was, and it wasn't safe for you to to be living in this world anymore. And it happened so quickly. Mm. It was just your whole world shifted. Mm. And so how did that feel to be heard? Felt good <laughs> that someone sees me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And this this is the power of it right yeah. there is so much of the time we can wait. We can wait to speak. Like, oh, I'm waiting to speak. And when mm. I was listening to you, I was hearing you. I was feeling it. I got it. I don't know. You can't see it right now, but it, yeah. I, got, I had my fingers um, and my solar plexus mm. because my inner child was feeling what you were feeling it, mm. to a certain degree. Mm. You know, of course, I can't. I don't have any, any awareness of, or, or any ability to really feel what you're feeling, but there was a sense of, wow, mm. that must've been challenging. Mm. And so I hear you and that's, that's what it looks like to be, mm. to be heard. Imagine giving that to your child. And then when we say, 
being seen. Now, feel these words when I say them to you. Medea, I see you. I see you for the beauty of who you are. I see you as a beautiful being. Not, not because of what you do, not because of how you dress, not because of what you say, but for the essence of who you are. Mm. That felt good. <laughs> that yeah. felt really good. Felt so yeah. much love. So now much imagine, love. imagine giving that to your inner child. Mm. Mm. And then the amazing thing is, is you feel good about it. Mm. Absolutely. That is so beautiful. Yeah. And now the last one is I feel you connect. Where are you feeling that? Heart. Connect to your heart. So take your left hand okay. over your heart and then your right hand over the heart, over the left hand. Okay. And just take a few moments, close your eyes and be willing to put your full attention on this place right now. Let yourself feel it. Let yourself be present with it. Taking in a deep breath, breathing it in. And then letting out a slow, deep sigh. <sighs> and when you're ready, you can open your eyes. Wow. Oh, I feel amazing now. Mm. It's amazing. And this is all to create one thing, being worthy. Mm. You deserve to have, to occupy this space that you have. You deserve to be on this planet. Who you are and what you have to give, not for any reason other than you deserve to be here, is needed. Mm. You are needed on this planet. Mm. And that's what that creates. Beautiful. Wow. I think I'm losing track of this interview now. <laughs> yeah. That's beautiful. Thank you. Okay. Really, You're I feel so amazing. welcome feel amazing um so you know you i've totally lost track of this interview by the way guys um yeah so uh, you know how uh, what does your life look like uh now mm. yeah. yeah so now i i get to um play in um jungle gyms um you know i'm I, I just i live i live in you know one of those the soft soft uh, soft play things you know all the time um i i only eat spaghetti my peas are separate you know like my peas can't touch my spaghetti um yeah and i only i have to wear you know i wear one of those bibs as well when i eat uh, no so all that is a joke i i like i <laughs> joked around because i don't know sometimes people think well what does this inner child healing thing look like are you are, are you doing all those things that and what it the very basis of what it looks like is i, I just get to feel like i'm being me hmm. more and more each and every day and what that looks like is i get to talk to people in a more authentic way you know we get to have a conversation that naturally goes into something that is really meaningful some people find that scary because small talk is a safety net. Um, yeah. You know, and, and, and it's, it's great, but I'm, I'm an introvert. Um, mm. And, and, and in small talk for me scares the heck out of me. I'm like, how do I, where do I start? Um, I definitely didn't get that class in mm. school. No, and, <laughs> neither did I. Um. <laughs> so, so, you know, I, I find myself being so much more playful and play looks like so many different things. It looks like um, being curious, being creative. Like I'm going to, I'm in the process of creating some business cards. And when people say business cards, you, so you're, you're going to, you know, you're creating the design, sending them off. I'm creating business cards. I'm going to get some paper. I'm going to cut them out and I'm going to start drawing some love hearts and smiley faces on there in different colors. That's how I'm being creative. That's how I'm being me because that is, that is the essence of me. I'm colorful. You know, I, I want to show people that. And that's just one example of how, you know, that's not how things are normally done, mm. but how things are normally done is, you know, it's not who we are. Mm. It's, you know, so I was just recently with my mom as well and I was able to connect with her so beautifully. Mm. Um, you know, I, I, I get to feel my emotions. It's almost as if like, it's such a gift. Uh, although sometimes it's so challenging to feel, you know, feel the, the discomfort of some of these emotions. Mm -hmm. I get to feel them all. Mm -hmm. 
and yeah, I get to connect deeply with, mm. with people and myself more often. Um, yeah, that's a, maybe it's a bit vague, but yeah. yeah, you're you're a true empowered empath, I would say, because we sometimes we because uh, a lot of uh, people who are empaths, they take it negatively, um, you know, that all oh, we're just sponges for the people and, you know, um, the world, like we, we can't fit into the world and we can't feel, we can't express. So it's a bit of a challenge for a, an empath. So, you, you know, what advice would you give them uh, if they are going through their mindset of yeah. negative mindset that we, you know, we are just a sponge and, you know, yeah. I don't want to be like this. And what advice could you give them? Uh, I, I love, I love that question. I really do. Mm. Um, you know, sometimes we only see the end product, you know, of, of where I am now. And I, you know, I'm aware that um, I, that I'm maybe coming across as, as, as quite um, happy or, you know, accepting of my emotions and maybe even confident. Um, but there were so many years of my life that that wasn't my life. That wasn't the way that I was, um, and sensitivity. I was like, that was enemy number one in my life <laughs> when I, you know, especially in, in middle school, um, and more so high school, um, I used to feel, and I didn't understand what I was feeling and how I was feeling. I used to be around people and it was almost as if, you know, there was double the people there mm. because I was having conversations with people, I was being present myself as best I could. And then also I was feeling the things that they weren't sharing. Mm. And I had no idea what that meant. And my, my advice to you is your sensitivity is your superpower. Mm. And I say this from direct experience. I now feel what others are feeling. So I'm able to look inside myself and say, ah, okay, if I'm meant to be of service to you, if I'm meant to you know, give you some support, then I'll, I'll know how, you know, I'll, I'll be able to feel what you feel. And I, I really think everyone is, is, is able to do this, but I think some people are just more born with more, more that, that empath mm. take time to slow down, take time to understand what your feelings are. I've, I, you know, I've, I now have a practice of meditation every day, every day I've kind of, I've missed like, you know, less than two hands worth over the past five years mm. because of how important it is for me to know my feelings, to know what I'm experiencing and know when people are giving me BS, mm. you know, when people are giving me stuff and it's not mine, I have to be aware of that because otherwise I'll suffer. Mm. Um, so take, take my advice then is take the time to go inwards, find out what you're feeling, find out what is true to you. Um, and I've only found more and more as being an empath, being sensitive, mm. I'm able to use it as a superpower yeah. and not take on other people's stuff Absolutely. As, as readily. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And your, your challenges and adversities are uh, a light for you to teaching you uh, to the power of who, who you truly are. Um, and once you realize that, you know, you become so much... Uh, you you empowered you feel really really empowered uh by that uh beautifully said uh, i love it um so you know like you mentioned about you know uh having conversation with your inner child um so how can people uh have a conversation with that inner child if they don't know what the yeah. stage is um that you could do yeah. like briefly would they meditate and have a conversation or would they how would they have uh, have that mm. conversation. Ooh, I like that question. Mm. First, before we even expect to have a conversation with our child, um, it's very important to understand that your child might not want to speak to you. Mm. You know, and it's like they wouldn't want to. Why are they not want to speak to me? I'm here for them. I want to love them. Ah, I want to be there. For, ah! You know why? And so the reason. Imagine if you've ever been with a stroppy child who's like they're not happy. And, you know, and, and something's gone wrong. What they'll do, I don't know if you can see it. They'll, they'll get there. Yeah. They'll, they'll get like this. No, I don't want to speak to you. You didn't let me have dessert. <laughs> yeah. Now, imagine a child who has been told they're not enough and they're not worthy of love for years and years and years and years. And they've been ignored and they've been shown that they're not worth having the attention. Hmm. They may not speak to you at first. Hmm. that's understandable. Take your time with it. Be patient. You are building up. And I love this example uh, or this analogy is you building up the marble jars. 
each marble you drop in is like an opportunity to build trust. Hmm. The moment you lie down or you go and meditate or you go and play, you go to a place you, where your inner child likes um, or, you know, the child in you who you were enjoyed doing, like going to get some ice cream or, you know, going to the amusement park, hmm. you're dropping a marble into the marble jar. Hmm. And that's showing your inner child, look, I'm here for you. I want to be there. I want to be there for you. Each marble in here symbolizes how much I want you to trust me. I want to build this trust with you. Mm. I'm putting in the time for you. I'm doing this for you. Not because I want something out of you, mm. but because I want you to feel whole. Mm. And so when we get to those conversations, what it can look like is, you know, I do this a lot, slowing down, lie down, just lie down. And for me, a lot of my conversations come from my 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 solar plexus or my stomach because this is where the this is where shame is found um if for anyone who knows about the chakras uh the third chakra is where the is where shame is so shame blocks this flow of energy um mm. from this part of the body and so what i'll do is i'll take my left hand um and my left hand is is all about uh giving mm. And the right hand is about receiving. So I'll take my left hand, put it over the stomach, right mm. hand over the left hand. And I'll give love. Say, I love you for who you are. Mm. I love you. Mm. You're worthy of my time and my attention. Mm. And if you like, you can get a little technical with it. If you want to wait for a response, you can switch up the hands. Mm. I like to do this. This is the way I work. Um, I found from an energetic standpoint, this is how things, um, things can make sense. Mm. And so you take the time. To just listen to them and man they may say some ridiculous stuff <laughs> just it's okay go with it go with yeah it. <laughs> go with it go with it you may be wondering why the heck am i talking to myself who am i talking to mm. just keep on going you know mm. they they may say look i want i want to go for a walk and it's like 2 a.m or something or you know they may say something ridiculous mm. just go with it you you may not need to do it but just listen to them that means so much mm. yeah i hear you I hear you. <laughs> Definitely hear you. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, you mentioned about adults um, uh, before and now I see quite a lot of adults not tapping into that inner child because they think it's immature or, you know, um, and what would people think if they, you know, be more playful. So how important is, is how important is it for adults to be more playful and be more childlike? Yeah. I got a, I got a saying, uh, haters going to hate. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there, are, there are people who are going to look at you and be like, what is that immature person doing? Why don't they grow up? Mm. You no, know, mm. I, I'm, I'm, I, they hate us cause they ain't us. Mm. You know, it's, it's a beautiful experience to be able to fully express yourself and to be childish. Like it's, it's a difference between being child, uh, being a child and being childish or being childlike. Mm. Um, and I'll, I, I'll, I'll seeing, seeing someone like the Dalai Lama speak and mm. seeing the innocence and the purity on his face sometimes when he, when he smiles mm. and just like, Applied and you, <laughs> I can't help but feel it. Like I feel it in my stomach. I'm like, ah, oh, is he smiling at me? You know, that's when, that's that feeling of being able to say, oh my goodness, this, mm. you know, it's okay um, to be silly. It's okay to joke. You know, I say, don't take, don't take life seriously. Um, you know, because what, what's, you know, what's, what's the point? Um, don't be so serious. And I think so many people connect to this is like, they've got a job that they don't enjoy yet. They think, okay, I must have a job. I must do this. I must do that. Mm. You know, and all this is stuff that's been told to us so long ago imagine being in a video game and saying you can create your job you can create the life you want mm. like yeah, that's what i see yeah that's what mm. i see be, you know really getting and getting our inner child um on board with us because we can then say i'm worthy i'm freaking worthy of living in another country i'm i'm freaking worthy of going after the woman the man the whoever it is that i really want mm. um all these things and then you start to see what Oh, this life is great that I'm living. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you know, it's 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 amazing because I'm more of a people know me as really really energetic. So, you know, I have where moments where you know I have such a, oh so gives the best like wisdom advice, but then other times I just 
be a childlike, I'll be hopping here, hopping there. And, yeah. you know, two different people. But I balance it out because it's needed. You know, in our society, quite a lot of us suffers from anxiety and depression. So we don't tap into that playfulness, the fun sort of feeling. So, you know, if someone uh, someone actually mentioned to me, like, you're, you're 31 year old and you hopping around like you're a child. And obviously they have their own inner, inner child issues. I was like, this is how it's supposed to be like. Yeah. You so we are here to play we are here to create we're here to be joyful um and just hop around even if you don't feel like hopping around sometimes i'm feeling so sad i have put like s club seven my, like child you know s club music on and i'm hopping around my flat <laughs> you know it's it's such a it's such a great feeling i mean you know no matter how old you are being playful it should never sh there is never an end to being a, a child like playing around like a child you know you could be 80 year old yeah exactly you could be an 80 year old and you like hopping around and it's such a amazing and you know when you see them play you that you automatically start to play yourself you know it's it's amazing it's amazing um yeah so guys always have a, have that balance of so not not to take life too seriously and enjoy it because you're here to create you're here to um you know manifest whatever you want to manifest in life um <clears throat> so um you know i was watching one of your videos um on how to play so <laughs> it fits perfectly with, with what we're just talking about so you know what are um you were giving a couple of tips to the your um facebook live audience mm -hmm. And um, the, what are the three tips that you could give to the audience listening to right now? Oh, great. Uh, so there are, there are three I'll go through. One, to leave, leave a little suspense, you know, to get you on the edge of your seat to wait for the next one. <laughs> so the first one, yeah. the first one is spontaneity. Mm. Um, and this is becoming spontaneous. So it may be a little challenging in all parts of your life, but, you know, play with it, play with it, play with it to begin with. And, yeah. you know, if someone says you know, Hey, do you want to go for a walk? Being spontaneous, be like, yeah, yeah. Why not? I'll go, I'll go for that. Cause you don't know what could happen. Mm. You know, if a feeling comes up in you and says, I want some chocolate, go, 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 go mm. get some chocolate, mm. you know, or if, um, there's this, there's this desire to do something so silly, which is to jump up and jump around and, you know, get mm. up, get up, get down, mm. you know, then you just go for it. Be mm. spontaneous. Mm. Um, and this is, this is such a, a quick connection to um, what your heart, what your inner child is asking for mm. is that there's no time like the present. Like mm. there's, there's no moment that will ever be or will ever come again that is like this one. And they're saying, come on, let's live right now. Be spontaneous. Mm. The next one, so number two, uh, is about joy. Yes. I think this word gets... Oh, maybe overused um, because like I'm, I'm, you know, I'm enjoying this or I'm enjoying that, but enjoying be, being in joy mm. is something that brings you back into the present moment, something where you will lose track of time. And I mm. really like that, that way of looking at it. What do you do in your life that helps you to lose track of time? Mm. If it's your job, how beautiful is that? Like mm. that is like, I get to do that. I get to have conversations with people and I get to, you know, go on coaching sessions mm. and I get to lose track of time mm. and I'm in joy. Mm. You know, some people coloring, like, you know, yeah. doing art mm -hmm. that is bringing your inner child, the playful side of you out. You get to lose track of time. And number three is originality is being original. And this mm. question may seem silly, but it's so needed. How often do you get to be you? Mm. Like th this, this one, this one last tip is just about being you. And I spoke to before, I think I mentioned it in the, the video, I spoke to uh, a, a friend of mine the day before, who's a six-year-old and I was going through these because I wanted to test out if they were really true. I wanted to test out mm -hmm. if what I was saying was actually true or if it was just a bunch of nonsense. I'm the play expert who's mm -hmm. a six-year-old. Mm -hmm. And I started speaking to him about it. And he was said, yeah, sometimes I get to meet, I get, I, sometimes it's fun to be me, but other times I get embarrassed about mm. being me. And this is a six-year-old who's so aware of this. Mm -hmm. And he wasn't, you know, it's not like he was some, uh, you know, har like soon to be Harvard educated kid. He was just a normal kid, mm. but he was aware of this. And he said, sometimes I'm being me 
and I get embarrassed about being me. Oh, wow. This kid can feel this already. Imagine what it's going to be like to grow up. So being original is, is falling on your face or tripping up and not having to look around being like, oh, did anyone see me? Hmm. Giving a laugh off or just not even responding to it. So what? You tripped. Hmm. You're still worthy. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Thank you for those tips. I mean, I think it's going to help so many people as well. And throughout, I don't want this interview to end, but unfortunately we come into an end. But before we go, I have rapid fire questions for you. Bring it on. Bring it on. <laughs> okay. So answer this as quickly as you can because right. it's rapid fire. Yeah. Um, okay. So you ready? Yes. Okay. Yes. Cool. Okay. So, what is your definition of God? Who I am. Oh, amazing. <laughs> okay. How do you define religion and spirituality? Ooh. Differently, religion is a reminder that we are all one and spirituality. No, it's the same. A reminder that we're all one. Okay. <laughs> They're all the same. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, My heart's okay. going. I'm like, ooh, this is exciting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, next one. Uh, what was the most valuable lesson you have learned on your journey so far? Gosh. I'm more than enough for who I am. Beautiful. Okay. So one last one. Yeah. Do you believe there is an end to healing? Yes and no. There's no such thing as healing. We're already enough as we are. It's just a remembrance. Oh, that is so beautiful. I think you passed the rapid fire question. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> oh, this is amazing. Uh, so how can people contact you? Okay. Yeah, so I've got um, <laughs> a, a coaching page. Uh, so it's mm -hmm. called Hake Ross Coaching. Mm -hmm. You can look mm -hmm. that up on Facebook. And mm -hmm. hopefully you'll find a smiling face of me. Um, I do uh, lives uh, here and there. I've got a, a Q&A coming up. Um, and I also offer complimentary sessions. So the, and these come from love and service. So if anyone wants mm -hmm. to learn more about inner child, their experience with it, um, then you know then then i would be more than happy to, to to speak to them about it so please if you if any of this came up and you're curious you have questions please message me um mm -hmm. be, I, it is such a pleasure to be able to talk to people about this yeah please do message him he's such an awesome awesome guy i really didn't want this interview to end i mean there's so many other questions that i wanted to ask but mm -hmm. you know obviously if you have any more questions uh get in touch with this guy or work with this guy and um you know have fun with your with your inner child um so thank you so much hake uh for coming on this podcast i'm you know i'm pretty sure that you're gonna you help quite a lot of people a better understanding of what inner child is um so yeah thank you so much for coming on thank you so much Madea. it has been an absolute pleasure so grateful for this opportunity and uh i feel a little more safe and inspired knowing that you are bringing who you are into this world and other people are there to to learn from you so thank you oh thank you that's so beautiful thank you so much thank you so much for listening to soul awakenings with madia sosan podcast i would love to know what your biggest takeaway from this conversation has been share your thoughts on my facebook and instagram madia sosan you can also check out my website madia if you would like to watch this episode then head over to my youtube channel mads corner m a d z corner if you enjoyed this episode then please do rate and share this with your family and friends thank you once again and i will see you on the next episode